بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم صل وسلم وبارك وأنم على سيدنا وحبيبنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is uh, a new program uh, called uh, The Star of Tonight. The Star of Tonight, basically, uh, uh, I'm the host, uh, Ra'ad Ar-Rusan from Tajweed Institute, and I uh, interview one of the mashayikh, one of the ulama, uh, one of the imams, uh, or one of the uh, uh, members of our community uh, and the interview will be inshallah casual it's like i'm sitting with my guest you know talking uh, the intention is not to lecture uh, you but to uh, basically have a different uh, way of uh, interview inshallah i will ask my guest some personal questions. Uh, oh. You will uh, maybe laugh, uh, you know, um, from some stories, uh, a funny, uh, basically, uh, situation that, you know, the guest uh, experienced in his life. The um, star of tonight is, mashallah, a beloved uh, Sheikh and Imam to my heart, Sheikh Ammar Shaheen from Davis, California. Sheikh Ammar, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah, Dr. Rab. Jazakallah khairan for the invitation. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it a blessed program, inshallah. Ameen, ameen. So, Sheikh Ammar, as you heard in the introduction, it will be very casual, inshallah, azza wa jal. So, you know, uh, <laughs> open up the heart. Inshallah, uh, yani, uh, we will enjoy it in Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Sheikh Ammar, uh, what I know about you that uh, you are from Egypt, and you basically uh, were raised uh, or grew up in in in, in Egypt, right? Uh, and Mashallah, you started you're uh, like seeking knowledge uh, in early age. So uh, can you please uh, tell us a little bit about, you know, how you started, uh, the, you know, seeking knowledge? Jazakallah. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, salatu wa rasulullah, ala alihi wa sahbihi wa min wala. Wa attaba'u da jazakumullah khair and Dr. Rad for the invitation. I'm honored to be with you and I am sure now people will be listening in Ramadan, so happy Ramadan for them, inshallah. And I know most of them will be staying at home, but we make it, inshallah, blessing Ramadan. May Allah accept your actions and your good deeds. And may Allah give you the reward for the patient of being home, inshallah, during the month of Ramadan. I know it's hard and a struggle for all of us, not just imams, but for the community members who almost never miss tarawih or iftar at the masajid. Don't think it's evil. Everything has goodness in it, inshallah. Well, uh, personally, I'm not a star, honestly. That, that, uh, Alhamdulillah, we, Sheikh Rad is the star of the, the night. And is Allah here for his uh, thought and his good thought about his brother, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from all of us. I came into the U.S. in 1999. So up maybe first year of high school. A little bit earlier than that, I finished up to high school in Egypt. So I was about 12, 13 years old when I migrated with my parents. Alhamdulillah, I mean, memorized Quran at a very early age, but 11, 12 uh, years old. Yeah, Alhamdulillah, then we forgot and then we have to review and always a reminder, inshallah. And uh, when I came in to the U.S., at that age, my, my father pushed me to, the, to give a khutbah. Uh, and it was my first khutbah. He's an imam of the masjid. And Alhamdulillah. I benefited a lot because it gave me the courage to stand up at the member. Awesome. And uh, Sheikh Rad said, make it, make it funny. So I'm gonna, I'm just gonna give the, the experience if we start like that. Mm -hmm. The first khutbah I gave was completely memorized by Sheikh Kishk, rahimahullah. Wow. And um, at that, these days, if you remember, we had the cassette, okay? And we had something called, uh, what was it called? Walkman. Yeah, I remember the Walkman. So. The tapes usually says, uh, flip the tape to the other side. 
So I even memorized that during my khutbah. Oh my God. And <laughs> so I memorized the word by word. I was very, you know, the member was this high and it was a little short. So they had to put a little stand under me to stand on it like a stair. Mm -hmm. And I was shaking. But then when I start giving the khutbah and I said, flip the tape and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said this and that. It went on, alhamdulillah. Allah saved us the first khutbah. So I told my father, I want to give the second khutbah. And he said, well, you took a month to prepare. Why not take another? And I said, khalas, I'm ready. Mashallah, everybody praised me. People were so happy. And it was a Yemeni masjid. And the Yemeni community are very soft-hearted. So I got encouraged. Second khutbah started. Alhamdulillah, I did good. Memorized also. But then I was standing where, where people enter. The door is in my face. So a brother, I never forget, from Pakistan. Uh -huh. Mashallah, very long beard. He had his sleeves up for wudu, okay? He's wet. He just came from wudu, completely wet. So when he came in and he saw a little kid standing, he, he, he opened up his eyes and he was looking at me. Come on, to, to a little kid, I thought he was like a Sheikh Ibn Baz or Ibn Uthaymeen or those big names that, that we hear of. So I start going, sending Abu Bakr to Hellfire and Abu Jahl to Jannah. And do, oh. I start going. It was the end of the khutbah, alhamdulillah. And, People felt I was very confused. I wasn't sweating. I was soaking in the in my sweat. And after the khutbah, what's more, I mean, after the khutbah, this man came and he, I thought he's coming to tell me like, why did you do the khutbah? So he came, he said, how old? And I said, 12. Then he said, can you teach me Surah Al-Fatiha? Oh. And I said, oh, why didn't you say, you don't know Surah Al-Fatiha from the beginning? Oh. I thought, so subhanAllah, that journey started there. I used to give khutab and, and, and tarawih, lead tarawih, alhamdulillah, but never, never was into the uh, working as an imam mm. because of a lot of reason I was doing my other study. Another degree that I got. And then I went on to recognize that if you really want to strengthen your, your study, you have to have, you have to have some credit. And then the credible university at that time was Al-Azhar. Alhamdulillah, we got in and we're still continuing to learn, inshallah. MashaAllah. You, you reminded me the first speech uh, for me in the masjid. You know, uh, in Ramadan, <laughs> after the four rak'ahs in Taraweeh, we do like a short khatira, a short uh, yeah. talk. And I remember I was, I think... Uh, uh, like eight years old or seven years old uh, and I stood up uh, I was the Imam uh, after I finished I stood up and I memorized three hadith so I said I just will you know say these hadith without any explanation so when I stood up I looked at the people and subhanallah it was scary for me because this is the first time I face the people to talk, you know, uh, and subhanAllah, I forgot. Then, but I was, mashallah, like, uh, I acted very well. I told them, inshallah, after the other four rak'ahs, I will give you the, the khatira. <laughs> so I prayed. In these four rak'ahs, I wasn't reciting al-Fatiha. Uh, uh, you know, uh, oh, oh, I'm sorry. No, in 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 ruku, in ruku. Sujur, I just was saying the hadith, <laughs> thinking about what are you gonna say. And it happens. I stood up. Oh. I stood up. And alhamdulillah, it it went fine. So one time, I I I said this story to one of my shuyukh in in uh, in Medina, and I told him, you know, alhamdulillah, Allah Azza wa Jal opened the door for me. In the end. So he laughed. I told him, why you are laughing, Sheikh? He said, in fact, not Allah who opened the door for you. In fact, a shaitan who opened the door for you because <laughs> he, you know, he made you basically, uh, he ruined your four rak'ahs, you know, and after that, khalas, now, you know, just say the hadith. So, uh, subhanallah, the, you know, coming to a reminder, it's a, uh, we're going to get to it, I'm sure. I'm sure Dr. Rod is going to open that topic of jinn and evil eye and all of that. But, but something that happened, uh, so inshallah, I'll mention it if we get to it, inshallah. That related to the khutbah and it has a lot of benefit, inshallah. Oh, mashallah. Tayyip, Sheikh, yani since, uh, alhamdulillah, you, you uh, opened this subject, 
uh, but before actually I ask you about the subject uh, regarding the the the, the current the, the, I'm sorry the being home uh, now in this situation and Corona may Allah subhanahu wa taala protect us all Allahumma amin. Amin. Tell me, Sheikh, how's the situation there in your masjid? Uh, oh, how is the community, you know, dealing with with uh, uh, with this uh, pandemic. <laughs> we took a decision from early to, unfortunately, shut down the masjid and 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 close down the masjid, and we were one of the first few masajid to do that in the area, mm. um, completely for all salawat and all, all for Juma. The the there's there's a lot of reasons, not just the safety issue. Also, the, the, well, the safety issue is a big, big reason. And we were so worried because every masjid around were going to close for Juma, And we were the only masjid in Davis. So I thought about it and I said, well, if everybody's going to be closed, I had people sending me messages. Are you praying Juma?" Mm -hmm. So that scared me because there's no way you would have limited to 50 people. Yeah. It would be impossible. And people are used to that. I am always against the Ijma. I don't know why they're saying that, but I'm always doing things opposite. So they assume that I'll be open. So everybody wanted to come from, you're talking about an hour distant travel. Oh. So within that hour, you have people coming in the, every, every direction. So Alhamdulillah, the community coped very well with it. And they, they understand. And mashallah, we have a lot of students. So when, the, when uh, we have about maybe a thousand students, Muslim students on campus, when the campus closed, that made it easy for us to close too because they are going back to their homes. They're going to spend time with their family. So everybody understood that this is not just a decision. Mm -hmm. But I think what's more important is that um, the imams should use this time very wisely and should reach out to their communities and to other communities as much as possible. Mm -hmm. An interview like this, you know, the, inshallah, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking of doing something with Dr. Rod very soon on, on live Facebook. You know, I'm not into the recording as much, but I'm into the life. So I want every imam to be exposed to all communities. People now need to see that we are as imam working together for a benefit to the whole. This is not just in Weed Institute, this is not just Davis Masjid. This is all the imams working for the benefit of the Muslims to serve. And everybody has different ideas. So alhamdulillah, if we all get together, I think we could, inshallah, you know, cope with the... It, it is hard. That's not... You know well, Dr. Rod, it's, it's very hard. Mm -hmm. And it's hard to cope with it because this is maybe the first time in history for some people to go through something like this. Yeah. Okay. And if, regardless of what you tell them stories on the past, they never thought this would happen to them, even not, at least not their time. So we have to bring into our communities, and this is what I've been doing on my uh, lectures and my Facebook page and, and the live session, more focus on the you know, optimism more of trust in Allah, more increase of faith and Iman. Uh, this is not the time to tell them, is Corona a, a punishment or is Corona? They, I don't need that discussion right now in the community. I need a discussion that personally, what should I do and how should I cope with it? So Alhamdulillah, we've been very well with the, especially with the communication. Allah made it very easy for us. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. طيب, Sheikh Ammar, yani, MashaAllah, one of your uh, specialties, mashallah, uh, is uh, you know the the, the ruqya and the topic of of jinn, and even mashallah now your PhD in this subject as well. Uh, that, was the, that was the plan. That is the plan, inshallah. If, inshallah, inshallah. The, the problem is, you're we're doing so many things at once, and yeah, yeah. Uh, long time, long time. The, 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 the imam job is the. I believe that the most difficult yes. job. Sometimes we don't have a light time even for our own families. Like yeah, this, alhamdulillah. Is, this is the blessing of staying home now. Alhamdulillah. 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 So, Sheikh, in, in, this, in this subject, I have uh, some questions. The first question is, uh, unfortunately, nowadays, you know, if anything happened, uh, with with anyone, especially our sisters, they directly say it is an evil eye. You know, uh, someone failed in something, evil eye. Oh, there is jinn. Oh, there is magic. You know, so uh, um, can you talk, you know, briefly about this? Is this true? 
you know, anything happen with, with, with me as a Muslim, is that mean whether magic or maybe jinn, maybe evil eye, is that true? Well, subhanAllah, this topic has uh, both extreme. Mm. We have on the side where people don't believe that anything happens due to anything other than what they see with their own eyes, like means that they could touch and feel and see. Mm. And they have the other side who are always relying upon magic and evil eye and, and possession and all of that. And this is the problem. We are, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, ummatan wasata. We are always a moderate in all, in all our aspect of life. So lo- looking at it, yes, we believe in evil eye. We believe in possession. We believe in, 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 in magic. We, be, we believe because the Quran told us about it. And the Prophet sallallahu explained to us in details how things happen and how we, we protect ourselves. So I tell people most of the time that, you know, let's not give yourself an excuse as a hanger to hang your problems on. You need to first find a solution. There are signs. There are very famous signs that some people, you know, they might see nightmares. Uh, you're, you're talking about, see, this is the problem. You tell somebody you see nightmares, they tell you, oh, shit, I see nightmares. You have headache, oh, I have headache. You, you, you see yourself falling from a high place, yes, I see myself. My question is, how many times do you go through this? And the brother response to me would be, how many times do you need? Mm. For it to be, no, no, you tell me how many times you see it. If you see it once a month, it doesn't mean anything. Okay, we all have nightmares. We all have, uh, we all have dreams. We all go through this process. So there are signs, but we need to look for the major problems and we need to solve it. This view between husband and wife, between a brother and his father, between uh, neighbors together. They need to figure out what's going on first before they turn into magic. Most people turn into that side just because they want to blame other than themselves. And they don't want to take all the blame on them. I have, I have dealt with cases. We're, we're talking about uh, 2008, seven, around that time. So we're talking about what, 10 years, no, not 10 years, almost 12 years. <clears throat> yeah. 12 years, if, if every year I dealt with 10 cases, Wow, mashallah, that's a big number right there. So I have seen it. Percentage-wise, you only have about maybe 10% out of that who really have something wrong. Mm. And then you have another 10% who might be going through mental issues that they need to be treated for with the psychiatrist. And then you have the rest who are just, they just want it. They just want to feel that they have something wrong so they could, I, I, I failed my class because, I tell him, because he didn't study. Not because there's evil eye. Evil eye, I believe it. And I have seen it. And it happened to me and to other people. And when I witnessed it myself. And the Prophet ﷺ says the most afflicted part upon the Muslim or the individual who dies out of the evil eye after the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm. Saying, saying that remind me the story I wanted to tell you earlier. I was given a khutbah in one place. And it was my... my uh, my third khutbah in that masjid, and I, I had a dream to give a khutbah in that masjid. Like, this was my hope for, I, give, I started khutbah 2000, around so, so 2003. I got invited by that imam because he was traveling, and that masjid, mashallah, and he, they're all uh, on the sunnah, and brothers with beard, with the lot thobes, and, yeah, and you go in, you feel like you're in, in the most religious part of it. So I said, I wanted to. I gave a khutbah, second, third, I came in, this man was sitting down by the door. He pulled my clothes and he told me, he said, take it easy. We just changed the wood of the mimbar. Like, you know, because I, I scream in my khutbah and I, I speak loud. Mm-hmm. So he was saying like, you know, and then he said, you know, I hope your battery is low today. That's <laughs> what he said. So I said, I didn't understand what he was saying. I said, Bismillah. I got on the mimbar the brother, the elder man, mashallah, he used to make a that. He, he's getting up and I'm looking at him and I cannot remember anything about the khutbah. Allah. Not, nothing, not even a word. Allah. So I put my hand in my pocket and then I remember, oh, I, 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 don't, I don't read from paper, so I left my paper in the car. Okay, what am I going to do now? I have two options, to cancel khutbah <laughs> too late or to call somebody to go get my papers, which is going to be very embarrassing. Yeah. 
So I sat there, he made, this was the longest adhan that went on in my life. I felt like the adhan was a year long. Alhamdulillah, it was going slow. So I went down the member and I went to the man and I told him, you know, I read Ayatul Kursi in my hand and I told him, just blow in my hand. He thought I was doing this for the barakah of the khutbah. So he read, and everybody's watching. This was in the masjid. And he blew like that. I wiped over my face and then I got up for the khutbah and it was, it was very weird. I was so embarrassed because people didn't know what's, what was going on. And subhanAllah, it turned out to be the, one of the best khutbah that I ever gave in my life. Allah. Allah opened the door. So that is an evil eye and I have seen the affliction of it. But the problem is you need, okay, let, let's, let's solve this issue right now. The easiest way to do this is to ask someone who's experienced to diagnose your case, mm. not you. Because to me, it's gonna be evil eye, okay? I put a picture on Facebook, I get six second day, it's an evil eye, that's me, my interpretation. But if I go to someone who has knowledge, he would do ruqya and he would read on me, then he could tell me you have, you're possessed with jinn. I, I dealt with people who are possessed with jinn. I dealt with people who are afflicted with the evil eye. There's a brother in Minnesota right now, alive. He has an eye in his inner of his stomach Allah. okay the, the 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 inner part and the doctors told him you have the non-muslim doctor they told him you need to find a spiritual spiritual uh, reader or a leader to help you out wow so they took a picture of it because they, they took a biopsy and they don't know what's going on okay that's that's clear but not everything that happens because of it and what's more important is that we have the protection Every disease and every affliction that Allah sends upon us has a cure in it. Even that coronavirus that we're running away from. It's it's a matter of people finding it. Mm -hmm. So the cure is in the Quran, in the Adhkar, in the Sunnah of the Prophet. If you if you leave your house and you say the dua, you're protected. There are angels next to you when you sleep, when you make your adhkar, so shayateen are away. Alhamdulillah. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam قال ابن عباس The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did not die till he has told us about everything, mm -hmm. what benefits us in this dunya and akhirah, and what harms us in this dunya to be careful and to stay away from. So Alhamdulillah, yes, we have the, the the disease, yes, we have problems, yes, we have people who are sick, but at the same time, it, the matter is easy, inshallah, and we have the cure. Maybe they could go back to the lecture and look into all the evidence we give for the cure inshallah yeah alhamdulillah rabbil alameen tayyib shaykh ammar uh, inter uh, interpretation for the dreams are ru'a wal ahlam explanation yeah. ru'a wal ahlam this is mashallah uh, you always something known with uh, you give workshop uh, in this subject and this is subhanallah one of the most common things in the muslim world now you know, even we have overseas channels specialized in, exp you know, explain the, the dreams and the ru'ah, you know, uh, especially with our sisters. SubhanAllah, like every day they have a dream and then they call someone, you know, and the problem with that, when, when that person, like, explain uh, the 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 ru'ya or the dream they believe and they they basically plan their life accordingly what do you say about this the dreams interpretation uh just not to remember i always say to people wherever you at find someone who is good with interpretation of dreams they're very rare and i'll tell you right now um, if you want to become famous and you want to yeah, I mean, open up the door of fame to yourself, just open up a channel and, and start interpreting dreams. You'll, mm -hmm. you'll have people calling you from everywhere because dreams are something that takes place almost every night to many people. This is not, uh, this is not a disease like a sickness, like, like magic or reflection of jinn that might happen to certain people. This happens to everybody. And the Prophet ﷺ also told us dreams are, are in three, three parts. Dreams are from Allah, which are good dreams to be interpreted. And the people of Yusuf, when the king asked them, and they said, قَالُوا أَضْغَاثُ أَحْلَمُ وَمَا نَحْنُ بِتَأْوِيلِ الْأَحْلَمِ بِعَلْمِ they, they also said, but, but well, 
we think they are dreams, but they might, it might have interpretation that we don't know of. So Yusuf السلام, interpreting the dream for the king saved an entire country from hardship. And we know the dream of Ibrahim السلام, of course the dreams of the prophet are, are, are true and they must be fulfilled, but also dreams is part of ilm, part of knowledge. So dreams from Allah, things that you see could be interpreted in a good way, or things that you see that might sound evil. I'll give you an example, Sheikhna, for the, I, this was one of the uh, interpretation that I heard, that I, I did interpreting for somebody, but I, subhanAllah, it happened that I heard the same interpretation, so I was so happy from Sheikh Ibn Taymin, even though he wasn't into interpretation of dreams, like as a, as a, a whole subject, or sit, he sits for it. A sister called him and she said, uh, "There's." I saw my I saw myself doing tawaf around Kaaba, and there was a person completely naked. So I kept turning my eyes and I said, "You know, I don't want to look at it. Don't tawaf around Kaaba naked." So, and she said, "I felt, you know, very sad and the the sorrow about this, and I actually want to advise that person, or I want to. How should I tell him?" So the sheikh said, "Bismillah, please tell him." She said, "Yeah, sheikh, I'm. Do you you recognize what I'm saying? He's." His name, this is, to her, this is bad. That's how she saw it. So she wanted to advise that person. But again, she felt ashamed of that. And the sheikh said, why? Please tell him. You, you, you know, you, Rasulullah said, whoever sees a good dream should tell people that he likes. So they don't have envy of him. That's the meaning of yani, some of the interpretation. So she said, what should I tell him? He said, tell him the dream. She said, what's the interpretation first? I can't just tell him the dream. He said, if that, if when did you see it? She said, I saw it after I returned back from Hajj. Mm. He said, then tell that person if he did Hajj this year that Allah has forgiven all of his sins because the Prophet ﷺ said, whoever does Hajj, he would be returning the day that his mother gave him birth, completely oh. clean from all sins. So the sister cried and she said, it was you, Sheikh. Allah. And then the Sheikh started crying and he hanged up on the phone and kept saying, Astaghfirullah during the whole, the whole show for, for that. So not everything that you see could interpret in a way. But the problem with the interpretation is that if you see something and the first person who interprets it says it, it happens. And this is the problem we fall in right now. The Prophet ﷺ said the dream is, is flying on a wing of a bird. If, if you just dream, that bird will carry your dream and fly away. But if, you, if somebody interpret that bird as if he drops that dream, it will happen by the qadr of Allah. So this is not something to joke about or to say, let me look up something. Or, and, and the books that they have now in the markets, you know, Ibn Sirin's book and all of that. Ibn Sirin's book, I looked into it from, from a hadith perspective because that's my, my specialty, the science of hadith. 75% of it is narration to him, exactly. not his interpretation. And it's not even authentic with a chain. So we don't have a chain for it. Now we have the dream from the, the, what evolves in the heart Something you think of, and this is beautiful to remember, you know, I don't want to go into a dream lesson now, but I want to connect people always to a benefit. Ibn al-Qayyim was asked, this is something in the heart, Ibn al-Qayyim was asked for someone who said, I, I, I have a wish to see Rasulullah So Ibn al-Qayyim said to him, well, tonight, inshallah, you go home and you eat a lot of salt, and then you don't drink any water, and then you go to sleep and come tomorrow. So the man said to him, what's the connection between? He said, just do what I tell you. So the man, when he ate a lot of food with salt, he went to sleep. He came back to Ibn Qayyim second day. Ibn Qayyim said, you saw Rasulullah? He's like, what Rasulullah? The whole night, I am swimming in rivers, drinking water, showering with water, jumping in water. It was all water. He said, why? He said, because I was so thirsty. It was the salt. He said, if you're so thirsty to see the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you would see him in your dream. It's the same thirst. So that's what evolves in the heart. What you think of will come. If you have a problem, it will come in the dream. If you have an issue or something you, you thought of, it will come. The third part, which is the part that happens to most of us, most of the time, which is the dream from the shaitan, that to upset and to bring in grief and sadness to the heart of the believer. He wants to make believers be, feel sad and depressed. So he comes to them in the dreams because your soul travel outside of your body. So the shaitan is able to run with that. Like you see dead people in your dreams, you see your country, you travel distant. 
and all of this happens in second because the soul travels very fast. So people need to understand that they need to turn back to someone who has the knowledge, the taqwa, someone that they could trust in giving them their interpretation mm -hmm. and they shouldn't make, uh, this is another benefit, they shouldn't make up a dream just to get a good interpretation because it doesn't work. Mm. And this is the interpretation of the story of Yusuf to some of the Mufassireen. And طبعاً, always mention again and again, in your area, Sheikh Rab, you know, Sheikh Walid Basuni is the expert. He is, mashallah, uh, well known. And I read a lot to him and before I even knew the Sheikh, and I used to listen a lot to him when I was doing interpretation. And the Sheikh was like a source for me. Jazallah khairan. That's someone to return to, inshallah. Is, if he answers you. Mashallah, alhamdulillah. This time. Is, uh, you know, I, 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 uh, in my life as Imam and as a Sheikh, uh, I had a lot of like calls. People, subhanAllah, ask me about their dreams. And subhanAllah, I always tell them, Wallahi, ikhwani, I'm sorry, I'm not, uh, I, I can't. This is not my specialty. Um, and I, I advise them, you know, to go to someone who is specialized in this. Sheikh Ammar, inshallah, Azza wa Jalla. Sheikh, I'm going to give you a lot of khair, but you said something very important, and we should, we should advise people as we are saying that uh, an imam cannot do everything. Mm -hmm. You know, people think an imam is like a, a prophet or, <laughs> or a magician. One of, it has to be one of both, a prophet or a magician. Like they, they're able, even the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa you know, the, there are some things that a human being is capable of doing and some knowledge, a human, like I specialize in fiqh and hadith. Sheikh Rab specialize in fiqh and Quran and tafsir. Someone else specialize in, in aqeed and it's, it's a specialty. It doesn't mean we don't know aqeed, but that's not our field. We, we, we're not deep into debating with atheists, for example. I'll leave it to somebody else. But for the community, they think Imam is, mashallah, treat from Ruqya, he interprets dreams, he leads the Salah, he helps with family, he babysits the children, you know, uh, aqiqa, a wedding, what, what else? Yeah, yeah, Allah must like Alhamdulillah. 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 Uh, Alhamdulillah. Sheikh Ammar, we have five minutes left, inshallah. Uh, in, in, in two minutes, uh, with all your busy schedule, how you spend your time, uh, like uh, with your wife and your daughters? Do you cook, for example, now? D did you learn how to, to, to cook? <laughs> do, what do you do for, you know, with your children? <laughs> well, Allah subhanAllah, I have a program for the children uh, before Maghrib, an hour before Maghrib, uh, where for my children, they, they, wake up, uh, they wake up late. So that's, that's something, a benefit for me to work in the morning. Nice. And I have a, I have the school, alhamdulillah, I'm running a full-time school online. Nice. Um, the school takes about 10 hours per day because I do, I, I'm doing a production. I'll send it to Sheikh Rab, inshallah, maybe to pass it on to anybody who wants to learn. Uh, it's private now for the school, but I could send it, inshallah, to send it out. It's fine. I'm just not ready yet to, to publish it for YouTube till our kids feel that's something for them. I'm recording uh, four programs. For age uh, four to seven, seven to nine, nine to twelve, twelve and up. Masha. It's it's about ten fifteen minutes production of a story, mm -hmm. and then I take it in and I have this this room actually that I'm sitting in right now. I turned it into a studio, so I have a green wall right here. I I record, then I place pictures and animation under it. I do all of this, and this is something that benefited me from my study. And this is something we we forgot to mention, and again we'll mention it that. Part of the imam is to increase their knowledge with technology and try, try their best. I'm not saying you become an engineer. You don't have to, but at least get some tools because now, you know, I, I read something, Dr. Rab, that was very surprising. One of the people who, uh, a psychiatrist, someone who deals with children, he says the focus of the children that age, the, the, the group, we're talking about five to nine, 12 seconds. Allah. So every TV show, every, uh, every TV show, every computer gaming changes the screen every 10 seconds or less than 10 seconds, even if it's the same game. Mm -hmm. Why? Because the kids will feel bored. They're still playing the same game, but the screen changes. TV does the same thing. We don't do that. There's no kid who's going to sit and listen to you for 15, 20 minutes. 
just mm-hmm. sitting still, unless it's a jinn <laughs> jin story. They they will listen. They <laughs> they said listen four hours. So I I do that the screening thing. I I place pictures. I do animation and and I make it interesting at the beginning and at the end. They ask questions and and things like that. Then family time is a must. You know, at least praying together, at least eating together, doing some halakha Quran at night time when I'm finished with my recording around ten. I can sleep. Mashallah, two o'clock, three o'clock. So we play for an hour or two till they are tired and then they go to sleep, inshallah. So it's a mixture. I know a lot of imams are busy to have time for family and all of that. But that's, that's again, it's not an excuse because Alayhi Salam started home and then da'wah delivered outside. Alhamdulillah, Rabbi Alameen. Sheikh Ammar, we have one minute. Uh, we were honored to have you here in Tajweed in Houston. Uh, in less than one minute, uh, how you describe your experience? Allahi jazakumullah khayran. First, the hospitality of the community is unbelievable. And I can't thank the members enough for uh, the feeling that I got. I felt I am at my house, my home, my masjid, my community, alhamdulillah, which is a great feeling. And jazakumullah khayran. Uh, Something that I tell people, and I always mention your name and, and the Jweed Institute, whether you're here, there or not, it's to benefit from the group work. I like the way you did the, you divided the tasks into groups. So every group, <laughs> so it's, it's like a subcommittee under a committee. A lot of masajid don't run like that. A lot of masajid, one person, one man show. Not one man show as a human being. It could be a board, but it's still a one man show. You know, they don't want, especially the young people. Well, our youngsters need to get involved. And this is what Sheikh Rab is doing now. You know, they, when I was there, if I wanted, you know, I lost my wire, my computer wire, I knew who to ask. I wanted to blog something, I knew who to ask. The division part to divide the task for people to be able to achieve it is a great thing that you're doing. Jazakallah khayran. And again, our elders have done so much, so much for us in our life. And they took care of our masajid. They built our masajid when we, we were babies or we were not even in existence. So it's their time not to retire, not to come to the masjid. It's their, it's their time to be honored. And this is something we should do in Ramadan. Maybe advice this year for the imam or listening to honor the elders in Ramadan. I did that in my masjid. You don't know how much happiness it brought to the people's heart. You know, So they need to be honored. They need to relax and sit. And we should serve them and take care of them and continue on the mission because we have the energy and the capacity, inshallah, Rabbi Amin. So, Jazakumullah khayran. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless your da'wah and your message, inshallah. Jazakumullah khayran, Sheikh Ammar. Uh, it is an honor to have you always. And inshallah, soon we will have uh, 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 a seminar with Sheikh Ammar, bi-idhnillah tabaraka wa ta'ala, regarding the ru'a wal-ahlam, bi-idhnillah tabaraka wa ta'ala. We will end with it, inshallah, soon. Barakallah fiqh, Sheikh Ammar. Jazakumullah khayran, brothers and sisters. And insha'Allah with a new star, be tuned insha'Allah. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.